I've got the first coat of erythane on the inside and top part of the Christmas candy bowl. Hey, hey, a doily? A doily in my workshop? Okay, I'd better explain. If any of my workshop buddies see this, I'll never live it down. And yes, I did wipe the table saw off really good before I put the doily on it. This doily and the others that you're going to see in this video were made by my grandmother, my mother's mother. Here's a picture of Grandma. It's been held on our fridge door with fridge magnets for a few years. And I just put it on another one of her doilies so I could snap a picture of it so I could show it to you. Now in our house, as well as too many clocks that all gong at the same time, we've got a lot of Grandma's doilies laying around. I had forgotten just how many there were. Even on the kitchen table under an artificial plant. Now unfortunately I can see that one of the doilies here is not receiving the respect that it deserves. I gotta get that out from under there. Now these three little doilies on the other hand are going to get the respect that they deserve. I hope they know how lucky they are. We're back down in the workshop again and I'm going to lay a penny on this doily because I want to use it as a reference so that you can just get an idea of how small and delicate all the little knots and stitches that went into this thing. Hundreds of them. Thousands of them actually. Okay, I moved in about as close as I can possibly get here. And just look at how small and delicate all those little stitches are. What a tremendous amount of work. Here's four more that you haven't seen yet, and I'll give you a little bit of Grandma's background, what little I know of it. My mom told me that Grandma was born in 1905 in a little town called Dumbrava, and as near as I can tell, that's in what they now call Latvia, that's right beside Russia. Now I remember Grandpa and Grandma telling me that they got married very young. I think Grandma was only 16. And uh, this was during World War I when there was all those problems there in Europe. And I guess uh, for whatever reason they came back to Germany. Uh, they were of German descent. And uh, in 1921, after the war, they immigrated to uh, Canada. Grandpa and Grandma lived in Winnipeg until 1964. Then they moved to Kelowna and they retired there. And uh, these doilies all came from Kelowna. You know, look at this little white doily. It's got a beautiful, symmetrical design. It's got a beauty all of its own. Now recently when I was in Kelowna, Mom and I were talking about Grandma's doilies. And I was saying it's a real shame that they're just sitting in a cupboard somewhere. They should be framed and hanging on the wall where somebody can see them. So the more I thought about it, the more I thought, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. So I went on the internet to see what other people are doing. And now I'm going to have the fun of making my own frames. The next time you see one of these doilies, it'll be in a homemade frame. Mahogany, anybody? This morning my doorbell rings and it's one of my neighbors. And he brought me over some scrap wood and he said he's got more. And I uh, wanted to know if I could use it. Well, I don't need oak. I've already got lots of scrap oak. But this... It's walnut. And uh, he said he's got more. And I'm thinking now what I can do is these frames that I'm going to be making up that I was originally going to use mahogany. Maybe I can use a combination of walnut, mahogany, and purple heart and make a nice little frame. And uh, maybe some aspen to lighten it up. Anyway, any questions? shirt it's it's not the same one it's not the same one it's the same kind but it's not the same one when I retired I had about a dozen of these and they're comfy I'd wear them to church if my wife had let me man ok 
Okay, I don't really have the right blade in right now for this. I should really have this glue line blade in for ripping. It does a much better job. So, <clears throat> I've learned the hard way. It's best to wear gloves. These things are really sharp. And I've also learned that it's best to lower the blade down. Then I can get my hand in that hole a lot easier. this nut yet. Okay, now surprisingly this does not have to be super tight. Just a little bit tight. If it happens to slip, it will tighten itself. ready for business. Now my neighbor didn't have as much walnut as he thought. In fact, these are the only two pieces. The rest of the scrap he had was oak. So I've got to cut this off. And I'm going to try and get four pieces all together. So I'm going to do this one first. And I have to rip this down the middle. And then make two pieces here the same width as this. Well, you'll see what I'm talking about. Now I can't help but notice that this piece here has some little cracks in it. So I'm hoping it's not going to go all the way through. I'm realizing that if I continue on with my original plan, having a walnut and maybe some aspen, purple heart, and mahogany, I'm going to end up with a pretty thick frame. And it's probably not going to look too good. So I'm only going to use the walnut. Now after I'm done cutting off the corners, I should end up with a frame with an inside dimension of, oh, about 13 inches by 14 inches. I think that'll handle one of those larger doilies just nicely. All my workshop machines, at least the ones that can't easily be carried, are on wheels. That way I can move them around so it's more convenient to hook them up, like in this case, my router table to the dust collector. So I want to take the sharp edges off here so that the uh, front of the frame isn't going to be so unfinished. And I'm going to use this round over bit right here. Should be just about right. Well, I guess if you're going to want to see me finish this frame, you're going to have to watch for The Doilies Part 2. And please don't tell anybody there's doilies in my workshop. <laughs>